Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mel Fabregas from The Veritas Show, coming to you with an important news bulletin. There is an absolute media blackout regarding the Gulf of Mexico oil spill. We keep hearing of what seem to be unsubstantiated reports. I say unsubstantiated because, aside from the few images of wildlife covered in oil, there is nothing else. However, my stand literally changed a few minutes ago when I spoke to documentary filmmaker James Fox, who is at the closest point of this disaster. He's in Grand Isle, Louisiana, and the situation on the ground is most dire. Please know that I am in no way trying to spread any fear. I am simply reporting what you are not being told by the mainstream media. Why? Because their actions, or lack thereof, indicate that their reporting is being limited to a certain extent. And here's my conversation with James Fox. And directly from the state of Louisiana, closest to the epicenter of this massive environmental disaster, I have on the line respective documentary filmmaker and a friend of the show, James Fox. Hello, James. How are you? Well, uh, to be honest with you, a little freaked out. You know, James, I'm 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 glad to hear your voice first of all, and 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 to know that you are fine. This is an out of the blue interview, no pun intended. But I've been following your entries for the last couple of days, and for the listeners, tell us where when you got there, what you have found. And James, is it true that the mainstream media is not reporting what you are seeing? Well, here's what's happening, and I I be honest with you, I wouldn't believe it had I not seen it with my own eyes. I arrive. First of all, I spent a couple of days in New Orleans, kind of you know acclimating myself, and with a, a partner, a friend of mine, Jet, and we went around and did some interviews, man on the street, and it's kind of like like life as usual, and you know the festivities and Bourbon Street, and everything else, and then we went out and we started to do some interviews talking about the oil spill, and there's this underlying sentiment, anger, frustration, uh, that came out, pouring out. I mean, so people are so upset by their very way of life is being threatened right now and the way the whole issue is being dealt with. So we, we do some invest, preliminary investigation. We find, you know, one of the places to go, obviously, is, is, is uh, Grand Island, Grand Isle. So we drive out to Grand Isle today, and, uh, you know, it's kind of, I mean, the air is so thick out here, you could cut it with a knife. I mean, the humidity and everything, and we're dealing with camera lenses fogging up and the windscreen and everything else, and we, sure. get, we, get, out, we get out to that's the tip of, I mean, we're like, I don't know, 10 miles, maybe 5 to 10 miles from the epicenter at this point. And it's like bustling with activity. Helicopters were like, uh, you know, Chevron, a whole fleet of Chevron helicopters and um, just workers everywhere and, there, and people with badges. And I stop at this corner store and it was just this feeling like this operation that was going on. And, and, and I just felt something very, very intense was happening. We get, I get out of the car, my friend stays in the car, I go into the corner market, and I'm just being watched. Like, I can't tell you the feeling. I, I haven't had this investigating some of the most incredible UFO cases, like, for instance, Stephenville. I felt a little watched. This, I felt really uncomfortable. Get out of the car, I'm just being eyeballed. There's all these workers, they've got these, like, passes, like, credentials or passes on. I don't know if it's part of the cleanup crew or what. Go into the store, and I'm being looked at, and I try to acknowledge these people by you know hello and and it just they just turn and look to their look at their feet they don't want they don't want to they're, I'm, they're watching me but they're not interacting with me at all so i sit down at the counter and i order like a soda pop i'm talking to the this uses a couple of 15 year old boys next to me and the father of this boy apparently is working as part of the cleanup he was a fisherman but he no longer has his job so he's part of the cleanup crew. Sure. and i'm starting to get in and get this guy warmed up a little bit real casual you know and i start talking to this kid and he says, you know, nobody's talking to anybody out here right now. Where are you from? And I kind of tell him, oh, you know, I'm a concerned citizen. I'm in here. And he says, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a, my dad's out the cleanup crew, and there's a, there's a whole lot to the, more to this story than what the media is reporting on right now. I'll tell you that much. Start talking, listen to a little bit more. It turns out, like, basically what's happening is there's a complete media blackout. They are arresting mm-hmm. people with cameras. They're arresting. They will even arrest, I was told, off camera that if they're caught talking to a reporter, they are going to go to jail. There's Wait a second, the, James. So this is this is true, what's circulating out absolutely there? Absolutely true. Absolutely true. 
podcast. Absolutely true. I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm told to keep my voice down in my hotel room, but it sure. was absolutely true. I swear to you, I wouldn't have believed it had I been there myself. And they say, you call this a free country right here in the United States of America. And there's no freedom of press. There's no freedom of speech. They're closing down the airspace above the oil spill so they can, so reporters can't fly over just to determine right. how bad these these oil plumes really are. They're putting these uh, detergents. What's they're putting in? The dispersants in the water are causing the whole thing. Dispersants, yes. That's, like, that's just like a known fact out here. And any cameras, they're shutting off the beaches. You can't, you can't take any. I talk to people working in gas stations in the area saying that my sister's out here. She couldn't even take a picture. No one would allow any photography. You have to sign. Who is arresting Trump. people? Who is arresting people? Who? I, I, you, that's a very good question. Is it, is it BP behind it? This is supposed to be a state park. I'm telling you right now. My partner was like, let's get the beep out of here right now. I mean, I really wanted to stay there and go to a local bar and find out more. Tomorrow I'm going to go back in there. But I'm telling you right now, they got the clamp down. It's high security. BP is taking over. As far as I know, it's BP. And the government, to some extent, must have some involvement with it. I mean, Obama was at that very location on Friday. There was no mention of all this secrecy. Somebody sent me a video tonight of people who are supposedly witnessing Humvees and black vehicles with red lettering that say disaster relief and troops in full gear. Have you seen any of that? I, I have not, but that wouldn't surprise me at all. I tell you, it was getting really dark. I saw police. Uh, I, we saw police on a number of occasions pulling cars over. They said they're arresting people with cameras. Um, you can't even get access to the, to, the, to the Grand Isle, which we were about five or ten miles away from. There's all this activity going on, like it's bustling with activity, and there's this underlying feeling of, like, secrecy and and almost, like, I'll be honest with you, I hate to be a, I mean, kind of like this is a huge disaster that that the extent of this is so much further than what we're, that what we're being told. That's, I'm telling you, man, I, I, I was out there today, just a few hours ago. And I'd never seen anything like it. And I wouldn't believe what I'm saying had I not through my eyes. I'm going to investigate it. I'm going to go out there further tomorrow morning and, and, and ask a little further. But people are reluctant to talk. I mean, I'm telling you, I, t I got some gasoline on the way out of town, and I talked to the woman behind the counter. She said, well, that's really funny. My sisters, you know, they, they grew up in this area. My sister couldn't even take a picture. She was risk getting arrested. I said, who's doing this? Who's behind this? Yes. It's, I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't know, Mel. I if know. I call if I call the Grand Isle Police Department and speak to the sheriff's office and ask them, sir, who is arresting people, you think they'll tell us? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'll be glad to give you guys an update. I'm going to go back out there in the morning, um, but I'm also going to a place called Huma, where the, you know, the fishing industry is largely affected. But there is a huge operation. It looks to me as though the oil companies have taken over and they're running things and they're calling the shots. That's what it looks like to me. James, you are a respective docu documentary filmmaker. You have connections with the mainstream media. Have you been able to approach the mainstream media with what you're finding? I approached them today. I called CNN. And I said, got to call me. I got to talk to you guys. And she said, I can't call you right now. I'll call you later. And I'm waiting to get a call. From, I'm waiting to get a call from her. But to be honest with you right now, it's, I mean, whether or not I can get someone to come forward, even if they're in disguise, I mean, these people are like petrified. I mean, seriously, I, I've never seen anything quite like it. I mean, you know, you investigate UFO stories like Stephenville, Texas, and you right. know, people reluctantly talking about it. But I mean, these people don't even want to, they didn't even want to talk to me about it. And they just look down at their feet when I try to interact with them in any way. And I stand, I mean, I, I stand out. Anyone from outside that region would stand out, but everyone's highly sus suspicious. Uh, and, and you're very aware that you're being watched. I can't explain it. I'm trying to articulate what it felt like. It was like, I felt like I was being watched everywhere I went. I was being looked at. And as soon as I would turn around, people would look down at their shoes. But they were looking at me, and they were monitoring what I was doing. And it freaked me out. I mean, they hit this kid. my friend doesn't even want to go. My partner who's hit, here with me right now, she doesn't want to go back. I'm going to go back tomorrow with or without her. But I, 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 I don't know what else to say. I, it's, it's like a complete media blackout.